Okay, so we're going to have a quick look at uh, this Bluetooth 4.2 adapter. Uh, this is basically uh, meant, not really how they're showing it here, as in a stationary setup. This is more suited for a mobile application, so instead of paying $10 for Apple's piece of shit, um, Thunderbolt, uh, Lightning, what is it, Lightning to Jack adapter, you can actually pay 12 bucks for this and it's uh, powered by a extremely by an extremely powerful bluetooth chip which is the CSR 64215 has all the latest aptex and whatever so for android phones it's going to sound as good as a cd for all intents and purposes um with iPhones it's still going to use AAC cuz Apple's cheap and doesn't pay for aptex but that also sounds impeccable. So anything after Bluetooth 4.0 sounds awesome. This is 4.1, so 4.2 actually. Did I say 4.1? Anyway, 4.2 I think, I'm pretty sure. And so it comes in this uh, pretty small case, so right, very pocketable, and uh, has an actual lithium ion battery inside, micro USB for charging, two jacks output, so you can actually listen with a friend or so. So that's also very nice. Um, the battery is 300 milliamps and the draw when it's playing is less than 25 milliamps. So if we say it's 30, then that's gonna be at least 10 hours, right? Uh, so I did tear this down previously, obviously. Uh, it says it has NFC, but I'm pretty sure it's supposed to power this. Although, meh, I stand to be corrected. So if this is all what NFC takes, just having uh, just having a little tiny tag inside, then yeah, it does have NFC. But I highly doubt it, right? You, you need to talk to the Bluetooth chip somehow and tell it to do something, which this can obviously not, right? So they... I don't know, why would I even put it here? Like, if, if you're not going to wire it up, why just have it anyway? Uh, now, I would recommend this. However, there are some slight problems. So if you just want to use it every now and again when you want to use your headphones and such, then it's fine. It's, it's ample powerful. It's actually, I would say, too powerful. So there's a little a headphone amplifier inside from PAM. I'm not sure what the exact model is, perhaps we could read it, although I highly doubt the quality will be sufficient for that. Uh, let me try and actually read it. So it's the PAM P8908 uh, headphone amplifier, so it's this tiny chip uh, chip over here. So it's this one here. And this is the Bluetooth chip and this is a memory chip, I'm pretty sure. And this, I think, is a regulator of some description. For some reason, I have no idea why they put it there. Anyway, um, exactly what else on this? Uh, I was going to uh, mention the problems, right? So this does have a built-in microphone, and you would say, yeah, very nice, right? So I can also use it as a hands-free when I'm listening to my music, right? So a call comes in, you press the button, and you, you can talk. The problem is... It really doesn't at least with iPhones it really doesn't sound good right it's it's you can you can get across but you would need to bring it bring this up to your face and ain't nobody got time for that right so it really doesn't so at at the distance you see from the phone now it would already sound quite muffled and it's never gonna sound clear even if you bring it like super close so yeah it is what it is you would have right to 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 actually eliminate this problem and also the um, the startup tones given that this is such a powerful amplifier driving the single ended outputs the tones right when you turn it on when you connect to it are very loud very very loud so that's also considerably annoying um, again you can still it's insanely cheap right so you gotta take it at face value However, as you might have seen, right, you can actually hook up to it. The, the pads are clearly marked. 
uh, Miso, Mosey, uh, PCM, which is the enable. Um, what else does he have? Clock, ground, and uh, yeah, that's. I think that's all. So to program this, you'll want to remove the battery because you don't want this to be constantly on, which this actually is. So this is never off, ever, ever. It's just in a super deep sleep of the CSR, but this is, as I've previously mentioned, an insanely powerful chip, so it's also pretty clever. So it's a few microamps, and uh, yeah, so that's fine. Uh, so you connect the plus to battery plus, ground to you can connect it to any ground so you can connect it to ground here or or the other side and then via 10k resistor to the pcm pad it's quite tough to see but anyway you you guys will figure this out and uh yeah so that that way you can actually program it and uh there'll be a jump cut now and we're gonna go to the computer and i'll briefly go over some settings right so it actually took me since i recorded that video i think well, it must be two hours that I've spent trying to set this up so that it would automatically connect when you power it on, right? Because there's, I, I don't know exactly what's going on, right, to be honest. But I suspect there's different firmwares running on these chips. There surely are different ROM versions. And th there's some problems, right? So these are not rock-solid Right? When you actually use it, it looks fine, but if you try to set it up, you see that there's a lot of bugs and a lot of... Uh, right? So it's just the people making devices that have to deal with that, so I guess, right, why the fuck fix the bugs? Anyway, so I did spend quite a lot of time changing a lot of settings, right? Because before, in the previous Bluetooth uh, chips, in the 8645, you could just be able to turn off the one thing, which is the hands-free profile, and then it wouldn't advertise itself as being capable of handling the audio for a call, right? Um, however, if you do this now, it will no longer automatically connect at power on to the last device, which is disastrous. I mean, if you have to power this on, and then go to your phone, open Bluetooth, open the list, scroll down, find it, click it, then it really, then you could just, nah, you, no, it's, it's, it's unacceptable. So I did at some point, I have no idea what exactly I did, but the thing you are going to see will not work, kind of. So if you, if you copy those settings one-to-one, -one, it shouldn't work, at least with the firmware version I have, it didn't. And so I played around a lot more with the parameters, with the timeouts, with the settings, with the whatever, I'll upload both of the dumps. So I'll upload the, the stock dump as it comes in the box. And I'll upload the, the dump I've, uh, I've created, right? So for example, now it's connected and it just blinks dimly every now and again. Right, so in case you're on a plane or somewhere and you're connected to this, you don't blind anyone every 50 seconds because it blinks like pretty obnoxiously by default. So yeah, let's go on to that uh, jump cut. And All right, so uh, once you've connected up the wires, uh, you'll want to go into PS Tool. Um, and this should be detected. So if you don't have it plugged in, this will not be uh, shown here. So you click OK. If everything's gone fine, you will get to this page. Otherwise, it's going to say error reading chip or some shit. So that means you either connected the wires wrongly or you haven't properly enabled the uh, uh, the programming mode. Because the same pins that are used for the programming have other functions. So you actually have to put it into program mode. Anyway, so first thing you want to do is uh, hit dump and hit save. I can give it a name or something. I've already saved it, so it's fine. And this shouldn't take too while because these chips are quite uh, quite quick. <sighs> Fans are ramping up. Oh, overlap time. Oh, huh. Let's try that again. That actually did not happen before, so.
I am optimistic though. It's actually the first time I saw that error, so who the fuck knows? Huh. How big is it? Ooh. Alright, so I have no idea what's going on. Let's just uh, start this again. Yeah, shit is uh, getting quite hot, so. Alright, dump. Dump. It's not using much, but it's uh, pretty hot in here. So it's, uh, it's July, it's, uh, what is it, June now? Alright, so now it did work. So just a slight hiccup, and it should be about 32 kilobytes, or thereabouts. All right, so now that you've backed this up, you can uh, go into the uh, config tool. Uh, again, you go up here, select device, read device. That's the first thing you got to do, definitely. So keep that in mind. Uh, then go to Bluetooth. And this was called some shit. And I've called it black Bluetooth adapter. I have no idea, black adapter, let's just call it because it's too long afterwards. Uh, right device and that's pretty much now when you reset it the next time uh, it'll be called a black adapter uh, what else can you do with this so not a lot you can fuck some shit up here so make sure audio type is DAC otherwise it's not gonna sound uh, what else is cool mainly in Bluetooth so connection management Right, you can check these settings, play with them, but I wouldn't do too much to them because it's very easy to fuck these up. So the one thing you can do is perhaps change the, the amount of devices that this will store. So if you have uh, un, uh, unruly friends, let's call it, and sorry I'm so nasal, like I, I have some allergies and it's, it's the worst in-house. When I go outside, it's super fine. In the house, it's, it's complete shit. Anyway. So yeah, you can basically turn this down to one, so the device will only try to connect to the to the last device, basically. Uh, then what I also will do to mine is disable the HFP profile. Uh, I'm still thinking about whether I'm going to do it or not. So this will basically cancel out the microphone features. And unfortunately, it'll mean it won't show you the battery on the device. But... The, the upshot of that will be that uh, it'll no longer try to route the audio to the device when a call comes in, right? And it's a pretty decent mic, but it's really not good. You still have to have it fairly close to your, uh, to your mouth. And also, it's, even then, it's not as detailed. It's, not, it's just, yeah, it is what it is. It's a shitty mic, and yeah. Uh, so yeah, let's let's disable that. So right device. No idea what the fuck HSP is. Uh, doesn't do anything to disable it, but eh, whatever. And uh, something that is what the fuck is that even supposed to mean anyway? Uh, what you could actually do go and change is the volume tone. So I'd put this all the way down at 2 or something because otherwise it's disastrously loud. It is disastrously loud. Uh, also something else, audio prompts, no, tones. Uh, there's some tones that are very annoying and those are power on. We could just change to something simple like this. Uh, enter pairing. Ah, let's just leave it at that and uh, connect it. Where's the connected tone? Huh. So secondary device, all right. Oh, where's the first one? Volume min and volume max. This you also do not want. Volume toggle. Fairly short. So it's not short, it's fairly short. I can't fucking see it though. Like, I was here, throwing away. Oh, 
all the threesome shit, so that's... And right device. Make sure to do that. And, yeah, and then you can play with the LEDs. Right, they have LED ones, eh, and the blinking and the shit, so, meh. You can do some pretty interesting shit here in that, uh... You can actually increase the deep, uh, the... The, uh, the dim type, so let's actually do this. And, but that is pretty much all. And then feel free to write, do whatever you want, play with it, but that's mainly what you have to do to make this very usable. So, like, top-notch kind of. It's probably not worth it just for this one to buy the programmer, but if you're into this crap, why not, right? All right, so we're done with the computer part.